Daniel O'Rourke, an Irish tale told and illustrated by Gerald McDermott. Read by John Robledo. On a fine summer evening many years ago, Daniel O'Rourke went up to a grand party at the great mansion on the hill. Folks both rich and poor had been invited to join in the merriment. There was music and laughter and plenty of food and drink. Dan danced and danced until he could dance no more. Then he dined on green cheese and goose livers until he thought he would burst. It was well after midnight when he finally paid his respects and said farewell. Daniel O'Rourke stepped out into the night, passed through the great stone gates of the mansion, and walked down the hill toward the little white cottage where he lived with his mother. Dan paused for a moment by the Puka Spirit's tower, stretched, yawned, and then continued on his way. Just as he was about to cross the brook, he looked up and saw all the stars in the summer sky. Lovely, he said. It was then that he missed his footing on a slippery stone, stumbled, and fell headlong into the water. Suddenly, the quiet little brook became a rushing river that sparkled like the Milky Way. Death alive! I'll be drowned now! cried Daniel. He was swept away on a wild ride that carried him far out to sea. After tossing about for what seemed like hours, Daniel was washed up on the misty shores of a strange island. Though the moon was bright, Daniel O'Rourke could see nothing, so he sat down on a rock and scratched his head. Just then, a black shape circled down from the sky and landed with a pounce in front of Dan. Sure, but it was an eagle. Daniel O'Rourke, said the bird, how do you do? Very well, thank you, sir, said Dan. I only wish I was home again. Well, then upon my back, Dan, said the eagle, I'll take you away from this place. Daniel O'Rourke soon found himself being carried high up into the sky, but instead of taking Dan to his mother's little white cottage, the eagle flew higher and higher until they reached the moon. There was a reaping hook sticking out of it, and the eagle dropped Dan on the end of the handle. Dan, said the eagle, hold tight to the reaping hook, or I'll be saying goodbye to you now. You can't leave me here, cried Dan. I can and I will, said the eagle. You see, Dan, I know it was you who robbed my nest last year. Now we're even. The eagle flew off, laughing. Daniel bawled after him, calling him a beast and a brute, but all for nothing. There Dan stayed, hanging from a hook on the moon. Just then the door opened in the middle of the moon. Good morning, Daniel O'Rourke, said a little man with a long white beard. How do you do? Oh, very well, your honor, said Dan. And how did you come to be here? The little man asked. Dan then told him the story of how he had gotten lost and been brought to the moon. Tis a lovely tale, Dan, said the man in the moon. But here you must not stay, so be off in less than no time. Is that any way to treat a man so far from home? cried Dan. Yes, scoundrel, I'll not budge. We'll see how that is to be, said the little man, and he disappeared inside. Quick as a wink, the man in the moon was back with his kitchen cleaver. Whap! He chopped the handle of the reaping hook in half, and Daniel O'Rourke went falling through the clouds. Farewell to you, Dan, called the little old man. Don't come again unless you're invited. Daniel O'Rourke tumbled over and over, down through the night sky. This is a pretty pickle for a decent man to be in, said Dan as he fell. The words were hardly out of his mouth when, whoosh, a flock of wild geese flew by. The old gander, who was their leader, looked up and said, Is that you, Dan? These geese, you see, were from a pond at the end of Dan's very own lane. Are you in good health this morning, Dan? <sighs> I'm very well, sir, thank you, said Dan, gasping for breath. I think tis fallen you are, Dan, said the gander. Right you are, sir, replied Dan. Then grab hold of my leg, said the gander. Where is it that you're going so fast? So Dan told him the long story of how he came to be in such a fix. Dan, I'll save you, said the geese. Just hold on and I'll fly you home. They flew and they flew over the great water. Dan saw his own beloved shores and his mother's little white cottage far below him. Stop there, said Dan. But they flew further still. Soon the land receded in the distance and Dan found himself being carried over water once again. Please, sir, set me down, begged Dan. 
Very well, said the goose, and gave a great flap of his wings. Dan lost his grip and went tumbling down. He plunged into the water and sank down to the very bottom of the sea. Just as he lost all hope, whoosh, he was shot up into the air. A great whale was bouncing him up and down on a spout of water. When Dan was thoroughly soaked, he heard someone say, Get up! It was his dear old mother throwing a bucket of water in his face. Get up, Daniel, she said. Only a fool would fall asleep under the tower of the polka. You've had no easy rest of it, I'm sure. Daniel O'Rourke agreed. Never again did he rob an eagle's nest, or eat green cheese, or dine on goose livers. And that was the last time Daniel O'Rourke slept under the Pooka's tower, and not in his very own bed. The End